may my will be seen in the heart. And may you watch the space. But I didn't see it. From Maheta, because he made his will, like when we are pleading with him on daily basis to say, let your will be done. Not ours, not anybody else's will, but his will. And today we are celebrating that will of his. Why don't you share a better with my son? As I read through the book, I was like, yay! This is like my life. <laughs> I'm going to take this opportunity to welcome everyone. Dr. Jerry, Mufuge, Mahita, welcome to our beautiful university. You can see we have a beautiful university community. Professor Twala, thank you so much. I know you always when we say the library you jump. You don't even ask questions. You are always here to tell us and to us as an esteemed professor of this university. I see our wonderful lecturers are here, academics. Thank you so much for creating this uh, wonderful opportunity for by the way to, to share this special day with us. Colleagues in the library, thank you so much. Support services staff who are here to join us. Thank you so much. And our very, very intelligent future leaders of this country. People are going to make this beautiful country of us, you know, one of the best in the world. Our students, welcome. Welcome to the library show. This is your home, away from home, where you will realize your, your dream. Dr. Jerry, I can't wait to hear about Tapo. <laughs> Um, that was a really powerful welcoming. I, I almost feel uh, small, like I'm Gabali and not uh, to engage further. But also now I must welcome uh, Prof. Chicha Twala uh, to the podium. Prof. Chicha was my lecturer many, many moons ago uh, in the history department, and today he's the deputy dean of humanities, and he joins us today representing the vice rector and. Uh, he was a VC, Vice Chancellor and Rector of our University, Prof. Francis Peterson. Um, as he advances, I would just like to advise that please that we keep our masks on uh, for COVID uh, protocols and regulations to be observed. And you know, we maintain the correct uh, what is it, distances between one and another just to maintain safety between ourselves uh, this evening. Proceed.
very much Prof Chita for a remarkable introduction to a remarkable man. Um, I am going to try my best to not take up a lot of time so that we can hear more from uh, Dr. Jerry Macheta uh, this evening. And my reason for that, you know, is that, you know, we end up asking, I want to, for all of us to have, you know, an opportunity to ask questions, to engage him, engage his thoughts, his own reflections and insights, as well as the book, um, so that you know you, you have sort of an understanding if you haven't had an opportunity, like imagine it, to kind of go through it and read it for yourself. Um, Tadajer, I'm going to ask a very broad question that will lead today. Uh, why did you write um, this book? Why did you feel the need to write the book? <laughs> This book wrote itself through Okay. Basically, I could not avoid it. About five years before I wrote this book, I announced from Facebook that I was going to write a book about men, for men, to men. And I, I just couldn't, couldn't come out. It just wouldn't come out. Because I just wanted to be smart. But I, the world was empty. And only after I found out about my identity, then the book came out. But there's a number. Thank you. There's a number of incidents that took place, um, I mentioned in the book. And let me mention those. 
Um, when I was about 15, 16, I wrote a play entitled, Who is My Father? At that point, I had no inclination or any suspicion about my fatherhood. The question is, where did it come from? My mother, after she, after the drama of finding out who I was, then tells me that at a very tiny age, she visits the Mufuken family. We, we, I, I, I grew up in Orlando West, between those who know Soweto, between Hector Peterson Memorial and Orlando West High School, where the drama of June 16 happened. That street, I grew up there, house number 8298. And, and then my mom goes to Lesotho, Malolo, next to Muela, Mofetong, Takasite. And when she gets into the homestead, the baby cries. She goes into the house, the baby won't stop. One wise old woman says, Meh, Go outside and tell this child who he is. Yeah. You know, with fear, shamefulness, and whatever. She goes outside and Tula Buti, Tula Mugwil, Tula Manamacheta, Chup Still. That doesn't matter. It's not, it, that, that's not superstition. When a child is incessantly crying and out of control, you you give them a lullaby by saying their clan praises. Sure. <laughs> anyway, this is these are the sort of issues that this book raises. Here's a difficulty. Quite often, us as grandparents, we have our children, our grandchildren, having our surname. That birth certificate is a lie. Because I'm not the father of that child. I am the grandfather. That is one of the issues that touches me. Because my birth certificate was telling a lie. So there's that about uh, my babyhood. There's that about when I was 15, 16 or so. And then, um, sure. Uh, Jim, come to Jobe. <laughs> I am in New York studying there. One lady says to me, Hey, Munachere, I, 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 I want a child. And I want somebody, I want a good, healthy, intelligent man to be a sperm donor. No, oh, the African in me says, Hi! <laughs> Spim <laughs> Dona. Well, she says, yeah. No, I don't want a husband. I don't want a boyfriend. I don't want to be my papa. I just want the sperm. That's all. No, no. You know. And then she asked me a very difficult question, which I'd like you to answer. She says, where are the men? Huh? No, she says, no, tell me. Where are the men? They're in prison. They, they are in hospital with, with drugs and HIV. The few good ones are already married. And many others are players. And then there's a very small section of men that are the malleable type. And for every one of them, there are 16 available women. <laughs> That's the ratio. So, so when, you tell, when, when you get shocked about this, so who should I marry him? And, and, and I had no answer to that. And so, Going into counseling, my wife and I do counseling, and you go through session after session after session. One of the difficult areas by Jesus is 
you go to a wedding and I'd like everyone present here today to go and help change that culture. The Friday of the wedding, the ladies have a shower or something, maybe the weekend before. Where does the man go? To a bachelor party. <laughs> to a strip club. Allow me to say they teach him how to cheat. No, no, I want you to tell me one good thing that the men get taught at a strip club in preparation for marriage, for being a husband, a father, a man. And then, the Saturday or Sunday, the old women take Makoti and put her into a dining room lounge and they take this 32 year old and try and make her a woman in one and a half hours. You're wasting your time. What she was on Friday, that's who she will be on Monday after the wedding is over. Please understand, a wedding is an event. It does not change character. Who you are on Friday is who you are on Monday. And, and so, now, Here's what I'd like us to change. The primary thing, the primary uh, medication that is given to Makoti is Nyamezel. <laughs> Go into this marriage and understand that men are problems. And there's nothing you can do about it. You must not ask a man where he comes from. And when he's angry, just go and talk to the family and blah, 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 and all those things. But basically, uh, yeah, it's time to talk. You know, let's, let's not go to the textbooks about patriarchy. Our society, our families, our churches, our what? They excuse men and give them the right to be on Nuasa. They do. And, and, and so there's a scenario in the book. One lady comes to set and, and she's got so-called blue eyes because she's been donored by the husband. She was told that the husband is cheating. And so she pretended to go to work and came back and caught them red-handed. And then the husband, you see, when you catch the husband, it's your fault. Now let's face it, it's your fault. Whether you get it through the phone or through the car or through, it's your fault. What did you want? And so she takes Makwapene away and donors his wife. And then there's a family hearing, and that will be my last point, trying to answer your question. Family, it's a family matter. No, don't go to the police, don't go to the counselor, Jerry, his wife. There's a family hearing. The ladies, take this lady. No, let's start with the father in law. Take him, Kwenyana, and says, Mona, can't you what's wrong with you? We all do it, but you cover your tracks. That's the education. When you are a real man, you must cheat and not get caught. That's when you are a real man. And then the ladies, the ladies say to the woman, listen, listen, we don't deny that he cheated, but listen, he, he married you. How many single women are there out there? And then he built you a big house and you got a car and the children are in private schools. Leave him alone, man. He's a man. What does that mean? He is a man. Think about that as we go through tonight's session. Leave him alone. He's a man. It is that, that anger, that dissatisfaction, that because I sincerely believe if you are a man enough, you can prove that statement wrong. Because to me, manhood is an inside job. 
Um, thank you very much. I think it is, it is more than I could have um, imagined. I read the book, ladies and gentlemen, I think earlier this year in January. And in preparation for the session as well, I, I thought of rereading it uh, from, from front to back again. And I thought, let me read it like I read the Bible. <laughs> and so I opened it and thought, whatever I find, I will, I will, I will start with in this session. And I landed on page 159. And I'm going to read it, and it's a very short passage, and I hope that Dejeri will expand on it. Um, thank you so much. I'll see. Do I now switch this off? OK. Um, and so then I thought to myself, if I read this to you, if I read this to you, am I on? Can you hear me? OK, fantastic. Here we go. I thought to myself, if I read this, perhaps you can expand on it, because I have my own reflections. Um, but yes, let me just read it. Her dad, OK, let me give context. That is sharing on Hane Ashela Metlodine, who's his wife. And it is, yes, it's a beautiful passage, a beautiful story um, of determination and, re and fearing of rejection, Lopesha. But you know, God is good, and we're here today, many, many years, many, many years later. Um, it reads as such, her dad in Tatesono was the epitome of a father. He was loving and protective of his children. I had no reference for a father, so I misunderstood him. I merely saw him as an impediment. And I, am, I guess I'm trying to ask the question, Dr. Jerry, of what it means that one, you know, you, are, you have become, you've grown up to become a father yourself, but there was also a time when you were a fatherless son. So you have sort of, lived and existed in both ends of the spectrum of fatherhood, basically. And I, I was wondering to myself what it means for us today with the kind of, you know, I, I guess it's a pandemic of absent fathers and the lack of positive male role models in our communities as a result. And even those who are present are seen as impediments. And so there isn't necessarily a supportive environment to be responsible. The cooler thing is to, as you've said, uh, be a womanizer, be someone who's out there in the world um, and have less time, I suppose, for, for the household and for the family and for the home. But what does it mean for us in us trying to shape a, a positive masculinity um, in response to where we are as a society now? Sure. When you are a father and you father your daughters. You could be a problem to the cheese boys and problematic men out there. Because a fathered daughter knows who she is and she's got her own values and protection. If a girl has been fathered, we don't have to start fasting when she goes to university. <laughs> because if she hasn't been fathered, she'll start learning about marks and forget about her faith. She'll start being chased by the third years, fourth years, who have the means and forget about why she came here and go back home with a two-eyed degree. <clears throat> I say, when you father your daughter, first of all, you take responsibility for her conception. You don't run away. You take full responsibility. I don't care whether it was a one night stand and so called mistake. And, and, what's that? Better. A 30 year old man said, Ah, oh, that injury, it was a mistake. A 15 year old boy knows one sperm plus one egg 
in one time equals one child. That's biology. There's no one here who doesn't know that. And for you to come back and say it was a mistake, you mean you didn't see your zip go down? Is that what you're saying? And so this thing that when a lady is pregnant, the first response from a man is, how much do you want to get rid of it? We don't take responsibility for our children. You take responsibility as a man for the conception of your child. Two, you don't outsource the fathering of that child to your wife and your mother and everybody else. You take full responsibility. This thing, hey, hey, gents, hey man, I can't go with my coup to my coup fair or the chief's match in Devon with you because I'm babysitting. You're not babysitting your father. You're not helping your wife, you're helping yourself. And, and so fathering takes care of responsibility and, and you you provide and you protect and 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 you give love. Listen, when when you father, you give those things that makes you vulnerable, such as if your daughter you're gonna have dates with your daughters and give them what it's like to go to a restaurant. They should be free to talk to you when they have their first period. They should be free to talk to you when they have their first crush. They, they, now, you see, when I wrote that, that just one was a problem to me. Because when Claudine, Claudine was a nurse in Nagant's great hospital, so every time she goes to the hospital, Ndatesono takes her to the station uh, in Tanzania, or even takes her to Faraday Station where she gets her last taxi. No, no, I can't go to Because the father is always there. He's in the way. And I could not wait to snatch her out of his hands. And so I am saying, my attitude was misplaced because I fell in love with a fathered daughter. And I really had problems with that kind of a father. Thank God he became my role model on what it means to father. Then I can be brave to say, if you think you're falling in love, let's talk about it. And don't go and stand at the corner because that's where the troubles come. Come bring him into the house. If he's serious, let him come into the house. That is so no. When I went into the house, he spoke with us for three minutes and disappeared into the bedroom. He respected me. He gave me the space to be a lover to his wife, his daughter. And so Let's please understand the protection, the inner protection, the mental protection, the value protection that a father brings to a daughter. And then the, the vultures will not easily get away with it in her life. So that was my problem with that disorder at that point. Okay. All right. Uh. I would also, in speaking to Ndate Sono and fatherhood, I think I'm also interested in, 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 in the idea of identity and belonging, because it's a big theme in the book as well. Um, and in speaking to the issue of you know, absent fathers, so many young men and, and, and young, all, most of us as well, really, many people have, have searched you know, for identity and for belonging. And in that search, there's, there's a displacement. Um, your search ends in your 50s, you know, 58. at 58, so really almost for six decades. Um, 
and in and in and in that search, uh, I think you you're fortunate to find some grounding, you know, in, in your career, in your family, in the church, in whatever else, you know, that you found, you know, solace in. But it's not necessarily always the case. Sometimes you, you then become, you know, um, you you draw on any and everyone who is a man in your life. I, there's there's a part where you share about the men who used to frequent your mother's shebeen and how you drew certain le lessons from them about what manhood was in the absence of a primary uh, figure or positive role model. And I wonder what, you, what your thinking is around that, around, around the search for identity and for belonging. Many of you have, heard, have seen me on Scandal. You'll see I speak, what's the suit to say potly lengths of happy lengths, I my mom to make ends meet, she ran a shebeen in my home, for which I thank her. She worked at a store at the Fenn station during the day, and then she ran a shebeen at home. The man there. Uh, came to drown their sorrows and then go home. But in that place, they tell stories. They give their own wisdom. And all sorts of things come into me unaware, completely unaware. Naleti uh, Sile, Soto, very humble man. And then he says, I care to have a baladi get He refers to how he impregnated a lady and her styles in the situation. Styles is the clever. And, and he still you know. And, and everybody respects him for what he is, who he is in that situation. So the more drunk he gets, the more you must give him space. And there's Ndate Mazia, who is a family man, and Ndate Wamusolo, Uskabamo Pazamisa. And then there's, um, I can't remember the, the other one, Wako Orlando West Extension. He drinks strictly hot stuff. Strictly hot stuff. He's, he's the kind of gentleman who would like cut high because conservating is respectable and so on. And somehow they become my education. Oh, there's Brajiga. Van Kimberly Huff. Van Kimberly Huff. That's, that's the guy who, who gives me a lot of these Africans. And, and, and the, the usual story that people like is, uh, he says, as it's like it is, that say on the hand is too. Man has a bad like it is, that say on the hand for baby is, and it's like a youth is too. Those kinds of things. And you don't have a reference for what defines a man. You don't have a reference. There's, there's no father in the house. Ndakem Fukien died when I was eight. Um, and I just heard about how, because he used to own a shop, he, he was a, a man of women. And my mom says, you know, when you were a baby, I was so poor, I had to use my breasts to keep you warm. How can that be when my father, when that damn fucking had a shop? How? How is that possible? And then she says, if children were born purely from love, you would not have been born. She didn't explain that statement to me. She just said it, and then she wouldn't discuss it further. 
and and so in the yard in the evenings i hear these men and i observe them but i explain in the book there are other men in the community that is call on uh, right next door who used to work at sabc who gave me a little job during uh, the break school holidays and then a little further is that the Walters is to lose house which I dared not go anywhere near because such men are dangerous. They get you to rob an island. <laughs> and then when you go behind Uncle Tom's Hall, uh, behind the Peter Peterson Memorial, is Hunter Demotobi or PAC. And, and not much is said about him because somehow he belongs to the wrong party. He's not ANC. And, and, and then you go further, there's Ndate Matthews, where a lot of uh, cadres who were going to be exported, who were going to be uh, taken out of the country, they slept there, they, they were collected there by Ndate Baruti Bamazayon, and they get dressed in Dia Baruti Bamazayon, and that's how they got snuck out of the country. And, and uh, Makai Tavashe, the musician, you can search these names if you want. Uh, he was right there. And, and, and I remember David Kolwane, the, the fine artist. I saw him. I saw him with the, these things that they used to carry their fine art, their work. And I just thought, my ruins in I didn't understand that you could live off your art. And then go a little further and turn left into Villagazi. There's the house here, Nelson Mandela, uh, which I kept away from like a plague uh, because you read the, the, the book here uh, that talks about uh, me and, and you'll understand. They had to put on a wall in the house for, for all the shootings and everything. And then a little further, get clear Desmond Tutu. Uh, which is, you have the two Nobel Prize winners. And then behind Keiza Mutaung and Rata Khwateng and, and, and all those people, and Hot Sticks Mabuse. So all these books, a little further is Gibson Kenter's house. So I, I, I hear about these people, but I, I keep my distance. I want to join Gibson Kenter, and my mother says, you mad. Those people are not, they, that's not being a man. They, they, they just womanize and they drink alcohol and they smoke and they go all over the country making people laugh. That's not a job. That's not being a man. And, and so my definition of manhood growing up completely warped. I, I survived. Thank God I, I went the other side with scars. Thank God. Because I grew up in the days of Okapi. If you know Okapi and, and, and three stars and, and, and the tomahawks. Alright. I did try my luck and, and playing dice. I thank God I never got caught, but I learned, I know how 6-5 and crap and all that is, again I didn't. But I've never smoked Dacha, thank God. I never made a girl pregnant, thank God. I, I never, I did get stabbed uh, coming from a, an acting class, and that was the end of the classes. So. I, 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 I thank God that even in that environment, I survived and went the other side without scars. Young people, you have no excuse with all the available knowledge to you to be scarred. Why, why, why? In the first chapter, is it the first chapter where I challenge men to read? Mm -hmm. Why, why, why read? My view, my view, Prof, is that these young people come here, we teach them how to think. You're not here to memorize. 
you're not here to remember the facts there, there, there. But if if you get out of this university and you've learned how to think, then you're educated. You see, you start first year with your cum laudes and what have you, and you think you know. You don't know. Apologies if I just blew your bubble. You don't know. We are at the beginning of the fundamentals of thinking. I remember the first year doing drama and film and uh, studying Shakespeare's tragedies. And, and you remember the Silver Tin Siege? Those, and there's a film about it where, the, 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 yeah. And, 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 and then I wrote an essay that says there is no, nothing called uh, tragedy. It's relative. Oh, yes. There's no tragedy. Because when ANC uh, operatives end up grinding away and ending up in, in, in a bank, and, and they say, release Mandela and we'll release all these people, and they all get killed and the photographs are splashed. Uh, they're not terrorists. You call somebody a terrorist because of the, the classes or the angle through which you're looking at them. And so, you come to university to learn to think. And so, I am challenging men because there's a general tendency. I don't want another man to tell me how I should live my life. And thank God a few of them get the book and they read that chapter and say, I'm going to show him, I'm going to read it and finish it. A few of them have said that. When you read, you know what you agree with you and you know what you don't agree with. But if you don't read and you don't study and you don't go workshops and you don't do anything, you only agree and disagree with yourself. You will not have a group. I, I teach in other environments, I teach directing. Now when you're a director in a play, there is no Google. There are no encyclopedias. You are there with the actor and you have the text. And, and so when you train a director, you're teaching them how to analyze the play and to create a picture and to infuse it in the actor. So you're teaching them how to think, how to see differently, how to hear differently, how to do differently, and how to... All those things. But when you do that, you take a person through all these things that some of them they think, no, no, prof, no. They say, yeah, why do you say no? Don't do it, do it. Why do you say no? They write it down. No problem. I grew up in, with a culture of debates in high school, which I wish they could bring to high schools because the level of intolerance amongst our kids is unbearable. When I disagree with you, I'm not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. And, and, and so I really wish I, I wrote that chapter basically to say, Bonta de Machita, Melitis, read this book and hopefully you'll think about yourself differently. What is it that makes you a man? Is it slaying a virgin? Does that make you a man? Is it honoring somebody else? Is that a man? Is it how many glasses of beer you can down without being drunk? Is that a man? What makes you a man? Think about it. Think about it. And make yourself vulnerable. Because the general thing out there is when, when, when you're already 30, you've never had a girlfriend, you haven't down uh, uh, laid a first day. First day! What's wrong with you with Shiman? They label you. And to try and prove that you're not a Shimani, then you lay a poor girl and you are ready with your money for an abortion. So 
I'm writing, uh, and I know you, when we were talking during the day, you, you, you say, why be provocative about the title of the book? I'm saying, I'm a man, are you a man? Because honestly speaking, there are some women who are more manly than some men. Honestly speaking. I hope you're getting your questions ready. I'm hearing the mms. mms. All right, all right, man. Oh. Okay. Pro, can we excuse Prof? He did Thank say he needs to run. Thank you very much, Prof. Chief. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to ask my very last one. And then I'm going to open it up to the floor and we will proceed with the Q&A until the end. But it would be incorrect of me, and, 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 and we discussed this as well, if I didn't also speak to the level of hopelessness that seems to exist amongst men. Um, in, when, when we're having the discussion, I, I even listed some names, and I'm going to do it now as well. Double HP, Ricky Rick, Patrick Shai, Sdumo from Gomorra, and these are prominent men. I, I, I'm not even naming anyone in our immediate um, environments and families. There, is, there appears to be a thread of hopelessness amongst men that crosses generations. Because even the men I have just named now are not of the same generation. And I would like your thoughts on that, on what it is that is happening and how do we alleviate it if we alleviate it or at least how do we address it? What, what are we looking at? The this, this sense of, of hopelessness. Um, in the earlier on, you talked about you know, this idea that um, emotion and thought are opposites when they're only you know, the beginning and end of one. And so we have also, I think also you know, there are ways in which we, we think about uh, reason and emotion as opposites of each other, whereas it's what we're looking at, that the, the denial of one aspect is creating a crisis with, amongst us. There's a lot of miseducation of men. Tigers don't cry. And instead of crying, we commit suicide. Because crying makes you a crybaby, a weakling. I'm an artist. Success in being an artist involves managing your low lows and your high highs. Those who have followed my career know that I've acted with both Sydney points here. Big names, big names. They get you from Johannesburg in a Mercedes, hand class, business class, five star hotel, everything, security. But you see, if you're not solid inside, you can't handle success. Success is not cheap. Success is not cheap. Wisdom is about applied knowledge. One of the things that society makes a big mistake in is when you are a celebrity or you're so called a star. Everywhere you go, they give you a microphone. They pretend as though we know about everything and we don't. And so we come to you, we go to Google and get a few quotable quotes and lie to you. But inside, we know we're the opposite of what we say. Now, for, for, for those of you who are believers, my mentor used to say, you, your testimony must be clear and clean. Then you can take the mic. So, there's a lot of miseducation. 
and, and, and now our career is very vulnerable because it gives you those high highs and low lows. And anything that smells of failure intimidates man. Anything that smells failure. When you get start getting into your 50s and you're not able to, 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 to deliver in the bedroom, you go to Oxford Street in Johannesburg, I don't know what your Oxford Street is, and you try to get women of the night. Your problem is not below the belt, your problem is between your ribs. That is the problem. And so I am saying, there's, there's the, you're in a university, so I can mention this word. There's what's called emotional intelligence. Okay? That ability even to say no to yourself, what, to something that would be nice to do, but it's stupid to do. I just want to characterize it that way. For now, we, we, we can talk about it. The, the Bible, Proverbs 19.11, for those who care about it, the, the, the smart man knows how to be patient, and, and, and he's so smart even to overlook an insult. Yeah? You could win the battle and lose the war. And so you don't waste time with stupid battles because you know what's the bigger war. Now, everybody thinks we are millionaires and we are bankrupt half the time. And when reality gets closer to us, we commit suicide because the question is, how do we define success? And anything that suggests failure to us really gets us falling off the cliff. And so, I, I don't want to quote names, but I've had the opportunity to speak to some of my colleagues. And, and, and sometimes you say, gents, let's stop living a lie. Stop living a Drive a car that you can afford. The, the, the salespeople come to us all the time. The, because here's the thing. The, the expectation is when you go to an awards night, it's important what you pack. Yeah? It's important what car you pack. And then, of course, the ladies, I don't know why ladies think when you're a celebrity and you're successful and you've got money, it's wonderful to be on your left seat car. Left car seat. Listen to me, it takes two to ten. I apologize if, 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 if. it takes two to ten. When, when, when you throw stones at celebrities, you must ask how many times actually they ended up in that situation because of the offers that came to them. It takes two to ten. Now, Mr. I must mention, there's a lot of wounded tigers. There's a lot of us who grow up as men, we are deeply wounded inside. And the things we do, we did not premeditate. It is our mood that make us to do those things. A man that has been fathered, there are things that you can't if you've seen what it's like for a lady, your sister, to be treated, and your father taught you how to regard your mother and your sister and any other woman, and there was a certain zero tolerance in your home about how you regard your sisters and your cousins and your mother and everybody, there are certain things you just cannot do. And so, Ladies and gentlemen, don't waste your time insulting men. You'll not get the best out of them by insulting them.
there's a lot of wounded tigers going on out there. And, and, and quite often, it is those wounded tigers who parade and pretend to be strong. And they think by insulting everybody and being arrogant and being disrespectful, that's when you are being a man. I'm sorry, it's a cry for help because you're hurting inside. Hurting inside. And, 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 and bomb men, let me request. Many of us, we are raising boy children by ourselves. Why? Because that bastard and his mother denied that he made you pregnant. A mother says, I know, nah, it's not my son. Where were you? Where were you? No, it's possible that there are 10 men in here who were denied by their fathers and you grow up with this sense of rejection. And then, and then, mommy and the aunt and everybody, because they hate that bastard, they teach you to hate that man and to hate masculinity. The problem is that you become what you hate. How many illegitimate children have illegitimate children? Yeah? Apologies if I sound like a preacher, but... <laughs> and, and, and so, my challenge to those of us who have the capacity, let us raise men out of our boys. Let's stop raising big boys. If we teach our young men to hate, one, they respect, they don't respect anything male. Any, and, and they don't want to be mentored. They, they, you watch, their CVs are long because wh when they are corrected, they quit from a job, they go to the next one. They don't want to be taught, they don't want to be led, they don't want to be corrected, and, and, and so no respect, no leadership. That is why they refuse to go to counseling. They only get their counseling at news cafe. And it takes them nowhere. Nowhere. And so, I, I'm sure you can pick it up from me. I am saying, let us heal the wounded tigers. It takes a lot of effort because a lot of them don't even want our healing with their arrogance and what have you. Let us heal the wounded tigers. Let us raise our young boys to become men. Your birth certificate confirms your gender. It doesn't make you a man. Your number of years doesn't make you a man. It says how old this meat is. The number of children you have does not make you a man. It just says God was nice to you. He gave you the ability to make children. I, how many celebrities at their funerals there are 27 children from all over the world, but they are not fathered. And so I, I do hope that this opens a discussion about manhood and, and not just about writing essays and passing the exams, but looking at yourself and say, actually, am I being man when I do this? Am I being a man? You can pass the paper, but fail life. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot happening. Like, you didn't tell me celebrities this hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so I'm going to take your hand, and then I'm going to take that hand, and then the, the guy at the top with the
the black cap. Yeah. yeah, maybe the gentleman can come down so that you're close to the mic. O ke ba rutan thos na yona ka mo. Ba ngutlwa. O ke ba rutan thos na yona ka mo. Ka ho e. And and so ke 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 buila nyanya na fela ka patriarch mo. Eh. Ba na ba rona ba rutuwa hore. Ha le mushimane. Ha ka tse dijana. You don't clean after yourself. Ntho tena ka fela. The next thing ka ba ne ha ona di values. Hey. So they are not to It's just like what happens ka weekend ya lenyalo ke. Bonkhono ba ke ba oblela hore. Ntate Reporter or now to a guy or a guy or to put a name. Hobani, Motuan me how we eat a jualo. It's over to put a thing because she cares. Motuan, how can she hide thing? Well, that way a guy or some my man. So that she knows when to get worried. And then Omuruta or she as cannabis. One day, Kabolin Tatori, a Mersaya Kai Kai Abari, oh. And then, you, then, as his marriage counselor, I think, you, you don't teach your wife not to care because the day she stops caring, you'll hate it. So, Bontateba, no, Bangala, Seo Balinso, that's it. He said, manhood is an inside job. Both of us. One. Hey. Yeah. Um, to me. Re re wua usani Tomorrow ka half past twelve. Ki twelve ka half past twelve. 12 o'clock. Rebua kata baya dingolwang, the writings in our indigenous languages. That's what we are looking at tomorrow at 12 o'clock here, inside here. So, hey, but now we shouldn't get too full, friends. Yeah. <laughs> fe, fe, I, I can read my problem to 
batho ha o bua ka puo ya ha o bana na hore se gona ha o tsebe go bua ngwana ka se ke ile lololo ke a le mo ke a le mo o a o a ke leng ntse ya sa ka a ba le ntsane ka ba tsebeng ya sa ka nga wa le ntsane o beng go yena ho ba ntlo ba bua ka ka ba ya hore em ho ngwana na a bileng fathers There are resources around Atzorka di Sengisan who is police. Who is police. Uh, there's literature that you can read about manhood so that one of the things is so that you can forgive the unfortunate unfathering. Because you have to be careful about how you deal with that. One lady says to, to her mama, her mother, Mom, you always said, no, my God. Now you are saying, Kanti, when am I going to see a gentleman come in here? So which dog do you want me to get married? So, I'm asking you to find literature that will deal with the inner questions and the inner scars. Two, let me request that I don't know who in this university campus, Bomemo uh, Sabatla, Bua Prof, perhaps can help. There's, there's got to be people who can be mentors, people who can direct you on the questions and the scars that you might have to deal with. I so want to suggest this, but my problem is there are so many young women who've been betrayed by the very people they trusted. And, 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 and I wanted to say, try and develop a healthy relationship with positive men in your environment. There's got to be one, two, three. With caution. With caution. Because, unfortunately, there, there have been casualties. But please find a mentor in this environment. Go to the student affairs and Bon Memosa and others who, who can assist. The, 
the realization that you need that to be healed is the beginning of the healing. When, when you deny that you have a scar and you have a warped mentality and what have you about men. You see, some people come here, they've been raped, they've been beaten up, they what have you, and you see, if you are on a mission to punish all the men because of the unfortunate men in your path, you are cheating your own self. Because here's the thing in, in romantic relationships. When you get into a relationship, it's about your capacity not just to, to give love, but to receive love. And, and if you're scarred, you can't receive heat. You can't receive warmth because the scar stops you from receiving that warmth. So please read on it, find mentors, and get role models, men who can at least model manhood. I, I, I thank God, and I'll repeat that, I thank God I'm 42 years married on the 9th of June. I have not cheated on my wife. Okay. I've worked in the arts industry. Not a single girl has had to sleep with me to get a part in my play. There's been opportunities. Now, I'm saying that to say I'm not the only man. There are a few good men, even in this university. Let your mentors direct you to those. And if you need to go and sit down with them and cry, and cry and weep with Mosa or Lucy or somebody holding you, do that. Take seriously that healing. Because if you neglect it, you'll find that even in romantic relationships, you don't last. Because you're busy focusing on your dad. I hope that helps. The second question. A memoir is not a thesis. A memoir, you give snapshots of your life. Uncensored. My editor says to me, I lost about si between 60 and 80 pages. And a lot of that has to do with my faith. She says, hey, Ethel, you're writing a book here. If we want to read the Bible, we can do so by ourselves. Don't put it in your book. And she said, you're talking about these theories and what have you. We don't want lectures. We can go to the library and find those things for ourselves. And by the way, do not dictate to us what the answers are. Give us the questions, and then we'll go and find answers for ourselves. So I'm not using theories, uh, whether biblical or philosophical or sociological or psychological. I'm not using that. I am giving you my scars and my stars, and it's up to you to work out in your own situation. What's your story? What sort of story are you writing about your own? I'm 66, I'm allowed to forget. Yes. And when you look at some of the children, they basically didn't show it 
Yeah. Um, that, uh, and I just want to um, get your view on that as to how do we then go forward in terms of re-educating our youth? Because these programs are so important to us as well, even today. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the last one. Uh, <laughs> my question is, it's a two-part question. Um, we talked about father-daughters. Um, how do we as father-daughters continue moving on if our fathers decided to take retirement? Um, the second question is... I <laughs> Maybe I didn't put it right. I mean, if fathers decide that I'm no longer going to be the father. And my second question is, how do we as a youth nation or youth daughters, if we have gone through the process of healing, bring men that we see that they are wounded into a space of healing, how to talk to a man? Thank you. Uh, yeah. There's a character that Mama likes in the book. And everybody who's read the book likes that character. That character is called Tapule. Tapule was cruel. And his way of making me a man of the future is to take a little boy of 11 years old, strip him naked, put him on top of the Rainier and wallop his bums to buy a paper. And if he cries, you remove all the others who are not crying, you wallop this one that's crying. And you mustn't tell when you get home. That pole was cruel. And I vowed that I'm going to go to Haute and get a two-edged knife so that when I go for him, I'll never miss him. So, Tapole taught me hatred. I got them with Lebu, my father, used to drink at home, my home. And he's the one who got me my first job without my knowledge. So in 1977, I started working as a bantu mail clerk in an insurance company. And he was a driver there. I remember vividly him with a parked Jaguar outside the main door and with uh, white gloves and a cap waiting for Mr. Little, who was the top guy. That's the image I have of him. And my mother tells me that she kept saying, Jale Ntate Long Fumanitsi Musebeti, how sa mufumanela la ele hempenyana? Can't you just give him a little present? And it didn't register to me. So I never did. Only after I find out that he is my father, he died in 1976. And in 2014, I find out that he was my father. And my mother says, no, look, I told you, I tried to suggest that you should do something, but I couldn't push because you'd start being suspicious. So I never suspected Mme. Never, never suspected. There are machetas who were very close to me. There's one Haitedi who helped me when I grew up and I was stroy behind her husband when she got married. We call, she, we call each other Haitedi up to today. They didn't suspect anything. And immediately after they get told that I am Macheta, I am a photocopy of their father. Photocopy, not my father. The, their, their father is the elder brother to my father. So, you know, when you're not suspecting, 
you, you, you don't see. You don't see. So I never suspected evil. Uh, was that, let me start here. Now, when people show you or tell you who they are, believe them and accept them for who and what they are. If your dad walks out of the house and denies you and please it's for your own sanity that you accept that he has walked. It will be better that he came back and fathered you because he, he, you didn't ask him to. He donated you into this world. But for him to be responsible, he ain't got it in him. For him to be loving, to be protecting, to be leading, to be providing. You're asking for too much. He ain't got it. And so if he goes into retirement, sometimes he runs out of shame, out of woundedness, out of, but please, you find your strength in yourself and any other resources outside yourself, but not in him. You're asking him for too much. What was the second question? Yeah. How do you speak to a man in pain? How do you speak to a man in pain? You see, it's very difficult to sp speak to your own father, to your own brother, to because you're so close. Sometimes you 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 need the diplomacy to find positive sources. I'm talking about you, maybe you give him this book for Father's Day and then you keep discussing and, and, and say, Now, Margaret, it's a real provocative woman. Yeah? Well, well, listen, let, read this page and tell me what you think. You, you, unfortunately, people, there are people who, who are very vulnerable. They quickly put on their guard. They don't want to talk. And so you really have to be smart in the way in which you talk to them. Now, I know to some ladies it might, fe might feel like, nah, but you're asking us to baby them. I am saying you, you be humble as a dove and wise as a serpent in doing that. But also, let us, be, let us have a zero tolerance of nonsense. Let's also be that. Stop saying kimonina. No. Being a man doesn't mean you're a cripple. No. You're not disabled by your gender. It's an excuse. Hi, hi. You don't know. You don't know. Tom, you don't know. He gets angry the whole month. Baby, you'll get used to him. Why did you get married if you're being a baby here? This is not a babysitting situation. Okay? So, so then that's where somehow those of us who are in that environment, there are those where times when you put on a ban, there are those times when you crack a whip. Let, let's, when, let's do what is necessary to heal with the tigers and to correct the rascals. Yeah, there was a third one. I don't talk that about me. Who puts a who is it? Idioms. Um, or idioms. And proverbs. And proverbs. But that's similar to, to the situation. Keeping a yayamina. What were these men write in these books? Now, idioms are history. You can't change history, but idioms are not the Bible for us to live by, and we have every right to challenge those. And, 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 and a lot of them actually push this patriarchy agenda, 
And if we do not challenge that, we have ourselves to blame. Those people said those things at that time because somehow there was a way of them making sense of their reality. They don't. It's a square peg in a triangle. It's impossible. So please, we have every right to question those. That's why I say this Nyamezela mentality, let us all go and address it and say, men are not cripples. When you talk to them at the wedding weekend, don't just take Makoti and put a pressure cooker. Take both of them, put them in the same room and talk to both of them. You know, so. Uh, I think it's time to close. Okay. <laughs> Almost. got 20 books here. Mm -hmm. I'll sign them and you can buy them, but others will have to find a way of saying, here's a number where you can order your book. So I'll sign, quickly sign those books and run away. Yes, ma'am. Now, culturally, we find ourselves with a lot of married women because they were impregnated, taking freedom. Oh, you mean, let's quickly get married just so that the child will be born with the same name? Oh. <laughs> It's unfortunate that that happens. It's unfortunate that that happens. Um, there are things that characterize marriage. One of them is that it's meant to be a lifetime commitment. Meant to be. Two, the both partners whether male, female, or male, male, female, female, whatever, there are responsibilities that go with being in that relationship. Starting with yourself first, and then yourself and the partner. It, it's a responsibility. Love is, not, love is not just a honeymoon. Love is work. My father-in-law said, Love must be revised. Love 
must be revised. Now, if you had a one night stand at a conference and you became pregnant and you get married, you, that is a shaky foundation on, a, on sand. And, and it's, it's, it's a problem. And, and rightfully, there's no love there. And it's a perfect formula for cheating. Because there isn't a depth of a relationship there. Now, you see, Kimruti, it's, it's difficult because now, I'm not saying you should divorce, but once you are married, you will then have a mammoth task to make it work because you're driving uphill all the time. Because sex is not enough to maintain a marriage. Sex is just one of the elements that make the marriage to work, but it can't be the only thing. And just because you had good sex uh, at a conference, it's not a basis for marriage. It's not. And, and so, it's unfortunate. And, 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 and if you're serious about it, I guess you're gonna have to make it work. But please understand it's not dynamic because the foundation is warped. Including many other foundations, such as arranged marriages and other situations. Or, or there are people who are running away from their poverty, and so the first man that smiles, bing, you know, and, and there isn't a depth of a relationship. So, the question is, if, you, if you're going to get married, why are you getting married? And what does marriage really mean to you? What does it mean? And, and if you can answer that, we've had people come to premarital counseling and decide mm -mm, it's not going to work. And I respect that. I really do. In fact, they talking about you see, if your definition is warped, you do not want to be asked questions. You don't want to be asked questions. Really. And, and it's very difficult to have discussions with those people who, this is the way it is and there's no other way. There's no discussion with those people, there's no debate. There's no research, there's no, okay, read this book. I'm not saying agree with the timer, but just read it and let's talk. Because uh, sometimes you just need to give them some neutral things. What, can you watch this film and tell me what you think? Uh, the, the, the film, A River Runs Through It. And, and, and one of the sons is really rebellious and what have you, but, but he's a tiger. He's a tiger. There's something about him that, that's, you know, uh, adventurous. And, and we want to be adventurous, but, but the adventure goes so far. What then when the adventure stops? So it's, it's a difficult one. You, you, you have to find the diplomacy that you can find. Um, they, they could come to the debate and listen to you speaking and just say, yeah, fine, I'm going. Boom, finished. They're, they're unteachable. You know, guys, you're at university. Please be teachable. I'm begging you. Be teachable. It's for your own sake. Listen to even what you don't agree with. Then you know what it is that you don't agree with. And don't label who you don't agree with. Because they shouldn't label you and discount you simply because they don't agree with you.
thank you very much, Dr. Cherry. It was a most inspiring session tonight. I think tonight we all learned to ask ourselves questions. You taught us how to reflect as I was listening here attentively, coming from a different cultural background, I realized how cross-cutting those issues of manhood and fatherhood are. And I continued asking myself, reflected, and I realized as we are embarking and traveling on the journey, on trying to be good men, trying to be good fathers, we need to continue asking ourselves, where are my scars? Where can I go? How can I go? How can I improve? So I really, from my own personal perspective, want to thank you profusely for having taken us on this immensely important journey. Janet. I really want to thank you for the interdivisional collaboration and for taking the lead in the book launches. I think growing the culture of celebrating, sharing knowledge and insight and wisdom through books is one of the most important tasks of a library. I feel humbled that you invited us to work with you and support on this journey. And I think together, there will be many things where we can work together. I'm really humbled and privileged that we could be part of this event tonight. Musa, it was fantastic how you took us with critical questions through the stages of our journey. And thank you very much for always being such a perfect host. To the people, to our teams, Marcus and Bolelva, who have been doing all the hard work in the background. Dr. Cherry, colleagues, students, without their commitment, we would not be sitting here tonight. And it was also them who developed many of the ideas for what we are able to reflect on tonight. Maybe before I close, one more reflection. We are here together as part of the University of the Free State Africa Month. And there, once again, I want to appreciate the library team, which has always, for many, many years, I think, out of our Africa Month events, together with the Memorial Lecture, the book launches of the library are providing continuity. When I joined a few years ago, this was the one event happening every year. So also, thank you very much to the whole library team for this continuity. And yeah, thanks once again. We will try to learn some of the lessons and ask ourselves some of the questions which you have taught us tonight, Dr. Cherry. Thank you very much. Let me just say. And by the way, with the kindness of the university, we are hoping to translate this book into Sisutu and Navy's course.
कमी खर्चात